Hello viewers, my name is Dr. V.K. Ajay, Associate Professor, uh, Department of PCE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College, Hyderabad. Today we are going to discuss the topic on problems on a broadside array. So today let us discuss the problems on a broadside array. So these problems are related to the course and it has waves and propagation. So let us start our session today. BSC stands for broadside array. A broadside array of identical antenna consists of four isotopic radiators separated by a lambda by 2. Find the radiation field in a plane containing line of array showing the directions of maxima and minima. Also find the directivity. So in the previous uh, session we have seen how to draw the radiation pattern for four elements. Uh, similarly as uh, how we have drawn for isotropic elements for a linear array. So we are going to draw the radiation pattern by, by finding the values of maxima and minima. So that means maxima and minima means in which uh, direction, in which angle the relation pattern is maximum and in which direction the relation pattern is minimum. So we need to find out the value of E first. So if we know the value of electric field, then it is easy for us to draw the relation pattern of it may be any type of array. It may be broadside array or infrared array or Yagi array. So now let us start our session with this problem that is by taking of four isotropic radiators. So here uh, BSA of identical elements of kinds of four isotropic radiators. So here, it may be any number of radiators. It may be either 4 or 8 or 2. The concept is same here. We need to find out the value of E here. Now first let us find out the value of E for this broadside array. So as per our previous theory, we know that psi is equal to beta d cos theta plus alpha here. Plus alpha. So here uh, we know that what is the broadside array? The broadside array is nothing but the relation pattern will be maximum uh, to the perpendicular to the axis of the array. Suppose if we take, there are four elements here and if we consider this as an axis, the maximum radiation will be perpendicular. The maximum radiation will be perpendicular to the axis of the array. This will hence this arrangement, this setup we call it as the broadside array. So to obtain the radiation uh, maximum either in this direction, alpha, this happens only when alpha is zero when alpha is 0. That is, the condition for this broadside array is beta d cos theta must be equivalent to 0. That means, either alpha must be 0 or psi must be 0. So, under these two conditions only, the relation will be maximum perpendicular to the axis of the array here. So, beta d cos theta is equal to 0 here. So, based upon this, we are, we are going to find out the values of theta here. So, here cos theta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to 90 or 270 degrees. So we got the relation pattern in the direction of 90 in the direction of 270 here. So these are known as maxima. So the maxima points are in the direction of 90 and 270. Now let us take the directions of pattern maxima. That means the major lobe, we just we have found out only the uh, major lobe, that is the major lobe directions are in the direction of 90 and 270. Now let us see the uh, how many major lobes are there and now we need to find out how many minor lobes are there. How many major lobes are there and how many minor lobes are there for this uh, four element array here. And we know that, uh, let, let us find out the directions. Directions of pattern maxima here. To find out the directions of pattern maxima, we need to know the value of Et here. The total electric field produced by four elements is given by uh, E0 into sin n psi by 2 by sin psi by 2. So here uh, sin n psi by 2 will be equal to 1. The maximum value we need to find out sin n psi by 2 will be equal to 1 provided sin psi by 2 is not equal to 0 sin psi by 2 is not equal to 0 here. So if we simplify this, n psi by 2 is equal to plus or minus 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. So where n corresponds to 1, 2, 3 and 4, major low maxima here. So here the major, this is the maxima and these are the major low maxima here, first null, first, second, third and fourth. So we need to find out the this, this, this are known as n values here. So how many number of major law maxima and how many number of minor law maxima are there here. So n corresponds to major lobe maxima here. 
So from this equation, you can write n uh, psi by 2 is equal to plus or minus uh, 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. Here. So what is psi here? We can write plus or minus 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 into 2 by n here. Into 2 by n. So if you simplify this, you will get psi is equal to plus or minus 2n plus 1 into pi by n here. So what is psi here? We know that beta d cos theta. Let us write as max. Why? Because we are going to find out the how many number of uh, uh, minor lobe, lobes are there. We need to find out and in which direction the minor lobe is there. So here this is the major lobe and this is the minor lobe here. And this minor lobe is in which direction? We call it as minor lobe maxima here. Minor lobe maxima. Plus or minus 2n plus 1 into pi by n you will get. So pi by n you will get. So if you simplify this, uh, you will get theta max of min is equal to cos inverse of 1 by beta d into plus or minus 2n plus 1 by n minus alpha. Minus alpha. So the minor lobe maxima will be equivalent to cos inverse of 1 by beta d into plus or minus 2 n plus 1 by n. Here n means number of sources. n means number of sources. Here the number of sources are 4 here. And capital N represents the number of minor lobe maxima. Number of minor lobe maxima. So here we can write as uh, theta ma max minus is equal to this. So let us assume beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda here. In our problem, it is given as beta is 2 pi by lambda, and the spacing is taken as lambda by 2, and the number of sources is 4 here. And the number of sources is 4 here. So, based upon the data, we can find out theta max of min is equal to cos inverse of 1 by beta is 2 pi by lambda, d is lambda by 2 into 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2nd you will get. So if you simplify this, uh, we will get first. So theta max min is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus 2n plus 1 into lambda by 2 into 4 lambda by 2 here. Why? Because here n is equal to 4 and d is equal to lambda by 2 and alpha is equal to 0 here. So for our case here. So if you simplify this, you will get uh, for n is equal to 1, you will get 2, uh, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 and 3 into lambda means uh, lambda lambda get cancelled here and 2 to get cancelled here you will get cos inverse of plus or minus 3 by 4 here. So if you know the value of cos inverse, you will get plus or minus 0 0.75 here. Plus or minus 0 0.75 here. So theta max of mean is equal to, you will get plus or minus 41.4 or plus or minus 138.6 degrees. So that means, we already know the major lobe maxima are in the direction of 90 and 270 and minor lobe maxima for n is equal to 1 will be in the direction of 41.4. So 41.4 means this is 0 90. So this is 41.4 and this is minus 41.4 and this is 138.6 and this is minus 138.6. So that means these are minor lobes. So when n is equal to 1, this minor lobe is in the direction of 41.4, 138.6, minus 41.4 and minus 138.6. Similarly, you can also find out the value for n is equal to 2. For n is equal to 2. If you substitute the value of n is equal to 2 in our equation, you will get uh, theta max, that means the cos theta max of mean 
is equal to 5 by 4 which is greater than 1 but the cos function is uh, never greater than 1 the cos function is never greater than 1 hence for n is equal to will not exist n is equal to will not exist so here only uh, there is one only one for n is equal to 1 only there is one minor low maxima uh, which is in the direction of 41.4 and minus 138.6 here so here when you draw the radiation pattern here when you draw the uh, radiation pattern for this problem so already we know that we got the radiation pattern as 0 90 180 and 270 so major low maxima of our broadside array the major low will be in the direction of 90 and it is 270 it is 270 so we got here a minor low maximum for n is equal to 1 is 41.4 so let us indicate this as uh, this as 41.4 here and this is 138.6 here so here 41.4 and here this is minus 41.4 here and this is uh, minus 138.6 and 138.6 here 138.6 here so here these are the data we got that is uh, minor lobe maximum now let us find out the minor lobe minima so this is the minor lobe maxima, and let us find out the minor lobe minima again so to determine the minor lobe minima again uh, we need to find out the value of et et is equal to e naught sin n psi by 2 by sin psi by 2 is equal to 0 here. So sin n psi by 2 is equal to 0 provided sin psi by 2 is not equal to 0. So based upon this data we will get n psi by 2 is equal to plus or minus n pi here or psi is equal to plus or minus 2 n pi by n by n here so what is psi here we know beta d cos theta plus alpha is equal to plus or minus 2 n pi by n here so here if you substitute is cos theta mean into mean so we are writing twice min and min so min and min means minor low minima so plus or minus 1 2n pi by n minus alpha this into 1 by beta d here so if you simplify this theta min of minor lobe is equal to 1 by beta d into plus or minus 2n pi by n minus alpha here minus alpha will get here so based upon this data we are going to find out the value of n n is equal to 1 2 3 4 and 5 we need to substitute uh, we will get the minor lobe minima here now for this uh, formula we shall let us apply so theta min of minor is equal to cos inverse of 1 by beta d into plus or minus 2 n pi by n here so we will get let us assume uh, beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda and d is equal to lambda by 2 and is n is equal to 4 here n is equal to 4 here so for this if you substitute here you will get cos inverse of 1 by 2 pi by lambda into d is equal to lambda by 2 into plus or minus 2 n pi by 4 so for n is equal to 1 you will get cos inverse of plus or minus 1 by 2 here if you substitute here why because lambda lambda get cancelled 2 to get cancelled so we will get 1 by pi and here you will get 2 into pi means and pi pi get cancelled here n is equal to 1 means 2 ones 2 twos here if n is equal to 1 here so cos is inverse of plus or minus 1 by 2 so this equal to you will get theta is equal to mean is equal to 60 plus or minus 60 plus or minus 120 degrees so we got here the minor low minima that is we call this as nulls where there is no radiation pattern so there is no radiation pattern in the direction of plus or minus 60 
and plus or minus 120 here. So like this we need to find out here. So all the values here. So major lobe maxima is equal to 90 and 270 and minor lobe maxima is equal to plus or minus 41.6 plus or minus 138.6 and minor lobe minima is equal to plus or minus 60 plus or minus 120. So based upon this data you can easily draw the figure this is 90 and 270, 90 and 270. This is plus 41.6. This is minus 41.6. This is plus 138.6. This is minus 138.6. And plus or minus 60 and plus or minus 120. So 60 means here. And this is the 60. And here this is minus 60 here. Uh, this is 120 and this is minus 120. So this dotted line indicates nulls. These dotted lines indicates nulls here. So you can simplify it like this uh, as what we have did just now. So ED is equal to you know, sin n sub by 2 by 2 by sin psi by 2. So sin n sub by 2 will be equal to 1. So we, shall, we are going to simplify this expression. Psi is equal to plus or minus 2n plus 1 into pi by n. So the minor lobe maxima equation, if you simplify, you will get where beta is equal to pi by lambda, d is equal to lambda by 2. And here, these are the just now we have found out the values of minor lobe maxima here, that is plus or minus 0.75. We got plus or minus 41.4 or 138.6 here. And again, for n is equal to 2 here, it is uh, n is equal to 2 do not exist here. So this is the relation pattern we can draw here. So whatever the data we have achieved, we need to represent in the form of a radiation pattern here. So this is the method to find out the direction of a pattern minima here. So the minimum value for sine function is zero. So we are written here as zero here. So find out the value of minor lobe maxima. You can find out the values minor lobe minima as plus or minus 60 and plus or minus 120 here. Similarly, for if n is equal to 2, you will get 0 and 180. So the nulls are in the direction of 60, 120, and 0 and 180 here. So nulls are in the direction of 60, 120, 0, and 180 here. Let us see the next problem. A broadside array operating at 100 centimeters wavelength consists of four half wave dipoles spaced 50 centimeters. So each uh, Each element carries radio frequency current in the same phase and magnitude of 0 0.5 amps. Calculate the radiated power. So we know that the radiated power is equal to I square RR. I square RR. In the given problem, I is given as 0 0.5 here. And what is RR? RR is equal to 80 pi square DL by lambda whole square here. So as the in the problem given, the antenna is half wave dipole antenna. For the half wave dipole antenna, the radiation resistance is 73 ohms. The radiation resistance is 73 ohms. So P is equal to I square I is given as 0 0.5. RR is 73 square here. So 0 0.5 square into 73 is equal to 18.25 watts. We need to calculate the power radiated by how many dipoles are uh, given four half wave dipoles. So that means for N is equal to 4. So P is given by N into I square RR. So 4 into 18.25 watts. So this is equal to 73 watts here. So P is equal to I square RR here. So RR is equal to 80 pi square DL by lambda whole square. And RR is equal to 73 ohms here. So P is equal to 18.25 watts. So but here we need to remember uh, whether the antenna is half wave dipole antenna or not. So as uh, it is a half wave dipole antenna, we have substituted directly as 73 ohms. If the antenna is not an half wave dipole antenna, if the antenna is not an half wave dipole antenna, then we need to find out the value of RR by 80 pi square into DL by lambda whole square. 
Why? Because already the frequency is given. The the frequency is also is not given here. It is given as lambda. Lambda is given as hundred centimeters. So we can easily find out the value of R. So for R value double and in a the radiation resistance is seventy three ohms here. So these are the problems of uh, the broadside array, which is related to the course antennas waves and propagation. And for more problems, you can refer uh, the textbook Balanis and also Jandi class. And uh, whatever the problem that we have discussed just now, uh, you can have a reference in uh, antennas and wave propagation by E. Bakshi and also the Kerry Prasad from that is antennas waves and propagation. So let us close the session today. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.